Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have a collective book haul of everything I have acquired since the start of January. It's going to be a pretty dark video because, well, we have no camera, we have no computer, we have no other way of actually getting this video to you. Um, and yeah, I'm not really... I didn't think that I had been buying books, but I have acquired quite a few from the charity shop, so I suppose we'll start with them. And remember, these go from January until now, and I'm wearing a hat because I couldn't be bothered to wash my hair for this video. It is one of the benefits I have found of hats since I started wearing them in December. Please just talk amongst yourselves whilst I collect all of these together. Um, Quite a few to be had here, I must say. And now I'm not going to be talking about them in any particular order. So, Brian, over at Brian's Bookshelves, or whatever his channel's called, kind of reminded me that I haven't actually continued with any of the crime series that I started reading years ago. And so, this book that I've got here is Looking Good Dead by Peter James, which I believe is the second book in the Roy Gray series. And I read the first one years ago, and I kept meaning to get back on board with it. And so, yeah, there's something here about um, someone finding a CD and then someone, the family being threatened. So it should be good. I read the last book quite quickly. Originally it was £1.50 and I paid a quid for it, so you know I'm doing well. Um... Then we have Birdman by Mo Hader. Never read any of this lady's books, but this was the book that introduced D.I. Jack Caffrey, apparently. And there's something about ritualistic murders and a serial killer and that, you know, that just sounds like the type of thing that I need in my life. Then, I have Extraordinary People. This isn't really going to show that I'm continuing any series, because these all seem to be the first ones in new series. But this is by Peter May, and is the first in the Enzo McLeod series. And this is some guy, some French stuff, some modern technology, and the catacombs. And yeah, I'm not a big fan of catacombs. The idea of them just really sparks up me claustrophobia. Um, then we have the start of another series, which is... Someone Else's Skin by Sarah Hillary, and this is the start of the D.I. Marnie Rome series, so hopefully this is good. Um, apparently she has her own inner demons, which most detectives do. Um, then we have Agatha Raisin, Something Borrowed, Someone Dead by M.C. Beaton. I'm continuing to collect these books, although I have completely despised them since about book 11. Um... And then I have some of these British Library crime books. We have Murder in Piccadilly by Charles Kingston. Don't know when I pick this up. Crimson Snow, which is Winter Mysteries. Um, apparently loads of short stories set at Christmas, so I'm not going to be reading this anytime soon. And then we have... The Incredible Crime, which is called A Cambridge Mystery, and is by Lois Austin Lee, and I've no idea what this book is about, which is really what can be said for any of those books, really. Um, shall we move on? Basically, for Christmas, I asked for a Willoughby Book Club subscription, because I've turned Lauren over at Lauren and the Books into some sort of life coach, so um, really... Yeah, she should be, like, getting loads of the affiliate money um, for loads of different things that I have tried because of her channel. And so my father signed me up for a year subscription, which I didn't expect. I thought he'd just go for three months, but he likes to go overboard at Christmas. So the first book I got... So with this one, we're losing books, we're losing books. Um, with this one, you have to, like, fill in stuff, and you have to say why, what sort of stuff you like to read, and it's supposed to be supposedly bespoke, and this book came through the door, and immediately I started laughing, because the tagline is called The End of the Day by Claire North, and the tagline is, sooner or later, death visits everyone. Before that, they meet Charlie. It's 
like, did, is it really that bespoke? Did they decide to send me this book about someone who's going to be meeting all these people before they die? Because, you know, I already work for an older people's charity. I'm already, like, the last person they're going to meet before the great beyond. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that it's not, like, biographical and this is some Truman Show type shit. Um, but, yeah, Claire North, I'm looking forward to this one. Next, they sent Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich, and I read this years ago. They say that it's Harry Potter meets the Bill or something like that. Um, this guy decides that he's going to be a wizard to solve crimes, and yeah. I found it a bit boring at the time, but I'm questioning whether upon rereading I might like it. I know that I gave the books to my friend Lindsay, so we'll see. I can always get the others out of the library, should I so wish. Um, and then, the only book that I got that was creased down the spine of these people and led me to think, do they actually send me second-hand books because you know I don't like a crease in the spine, is The Management Style of the Supreme Beings by Tom Holt. And this, um, I wanted to read Tom Holt for a while and I have just finished watching The Good Place, which is that show on Netflix with What's Her Face and What's His Face. And basically the idea reminds me somewhat of that. Um, they decide that they're going to get a new... So Supreme Being and his son decide to find a new management team for something. I'm imagining it's something to do with, like, the afterlife and stuff. Are they trying to tell me something? Are they trying to tell me something here? It's, it's not good, is it? I've just remembered another book I got from the charity shop. It's low, and it's a graphic novel, Volume 1, The Delirium of Hope. The customer who brought these in brought them for a teenage grandson and then decided there was too much sex in them for him, so I decided I'd take him off his hands. And you know what? I don't know what she was talking about because I read Monstrous and there weren't much sex in that apart from someone losing their arm. And even then I was just like, oh, is that all? Um, I imagine it was a pretty big deal for them. And then this I just remember seeing on YouTube a lot. Do you remember when people were talking about graphic novels years ago and then you all stopped? That's my shelf of graphic novels over there. I've not read them in a while myself. But I still quite like the format for a quick read, you know, one of those things that just, um, you know, just a quick read, basically, you know, to fill up your reading list. And also they're quite fun to look at so your eyes don't get too blurry. Because I can tell you, watching all these YouTube videos on my iPhone, I don't actually think that I've had much eye strain in my life before. I might be going back to the opticians. Um... Then we'll move on to the actual books that I properly... Shall I say that again? We'll move on to the actual books that I properly bought for myself. So, I got Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Mercado. And I was going to get this from Book Depository in the really nice American version. But I decided, you know what, I'll go for this bright green one because I don't have many green books. And it's a really unfortunate size that just looks silly on my shelf. So the only place I can put it is next to a white book. But that just completely ruins the colour scheme. Um, but yes... Really looking forward to this. Short story collection. I've been meaning to read it for the last three months, but I keep getting pulled away by library books and rereads. Um, what can you do? So this is a book that a lot of people have been talking about. Um, so we'll talk about it more when we've actually read the thing. Then we have Swan Song by Kerry Andrew. And this is a book that I'm planning on getting to soon because um, what was it about? It was something like about folklore and psychology and stuff. So this woman called Polly Vaughan... Um, goes to the Scottish Highlands and there's a myth drenched landscape and she becomes prone to visions or visitations and it just seemed the type of thing that I might like a few years ago I would have really like I would have read this book immediately and got it done it was like if I'd had this at the same time I was reading Snake Ropes and The Snow Child and all those books that are a bit of magic in the everyday then this would have been a book that was great for six years ago Charlie but now my tastes have kind of mellowed and if you've got a lyrical voice then I really need plot now as well so we'll see how I feel about this one. Next I have a finished copy of Three Things About Elsie by Joanna Cannon long listed for the Women's International Prize or whatever it is now um, you know I adore this book. You know that Joanna Cannon is one of my favourite writers and she's only written two books. And I don't care whether you call these books saccharin. It's got Battenberg on the cover. You knew it was going to be sweet. Then we have The Sparshalt Affair by Alan Hollinghurst. 
and I actually got this at the Waterstone sale and that's the only reason I bought it. Um, Dave over at Wild Reads and a few people were all reading this at the same time and I thought, you know what, I could read this as well. <laughs> I was like, nah, don't know what it's about. Um, Alan Hollinghurst seems to be a writer that a lot of people like. This was a Waterstones exclusive signed edition, so that's really just the only reason I got it. Well, I did get some nice things as well. Um, got a notebook that has blank pages in and line pages in and square pages in. And I don't know what I'll use this for because um, I really only want lined notebooks. I'm not one of these writers who can write in a straight line. Um, but yeah, I'll use it for something. And then I've got this one because it had a fish on it. It's lined. I'm working on something at the moment. It might do. Um, and then I have The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock by Imogen Hermes Gower. And I started reading this book on my Kindle when I was in Greece. And I've lost the charger for my Kindle. I've got it, um, the net galley proof and I've lost my charger, and so I wasn't able to read it. And I've no idea how far I was into it, so I'm gonna have to start from the beginning again, which is really just a trial for me. Um, because I don't like starting things if I've not finished them. Um, and then I also have The North, number 51, because I got given this by my good friend Joy Winkler. This one came out in 2013. And she was telling me how she thinks I should send some of my poetry to them. Um, and this was to get a feel of the sort of thing that they bring out. Um, yeah. And then I bought these shoes. Well, the boots, really. From the Doc Martins. And this is... Who is it? It's that guy. Some sort of um, artist. William Blake. And I believe that the picture on it's called Satan Smiting Job with Boils. And I got this for if I ever go and do any poetry readings, because I thought, you know, these would be great poetry shoes. And uh, the first time I wore them, I walked into town in them and got such severe blisters on me toes that I got home to a sock full of blood. So it takes two pairs of socks, but I've been wearing them at work. And someone did become very concerned once that there might be a penis on the side of me shoe. But what can you do? It's a charity. Anyway. Them's the books. A lot more books than I thought I had to be going on with. Um, yeah, I've not given you an idea what any of them's about. If you've read any of them, you could tell me whether you like them in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed something within this video. I hope you liked actually being indoors for once. And until next time, that is all.